okay so a uh, couple of videos back in the second third part i made a promise to you guys and um, unlike uh, node js which can either reject or resolve a promise i would not like to break uh, my promise that is uh, we should be able to write our code in this kind of a procedural syntax although our code is asynchronous in nature okay because that makes it very easy to read so while we won't be able to exactly write this line but we we'll get we're going to get something close to this and for that we are going to use async await async await is um, the you know uh, the answer from the gods of javascript who have uh, designed the language uh, to you know uh, get us a syntax that is much easier does not lead into a callback hell even promises uh, start looking a bit weird when we add a lot of then and catch calls now we can actually write our code pretty much like languages where we are not writing async code okay so let me just create a async await file Okay, why did I say that we need to understand promises first? That's because we are going to actually use functions that return promises to be able to use async await. So we need these functions which return promises to us. And then how do we actually call this function? So this is the way we are doing it in uh, the promise uh, scenario. So we are not going to do this. Instead, what we will uh, do is we will be creating, first of all, an async function. Now, uh, it's important that we uh, create a single function which we term as an async function so that the entire function runs in the background uh, asynchronously so that the code inside that can be written in synchronous way now so i will write async uh, task sorry async uh, function task like this now because this function has the async keyword that means that i can use a special keyword called await here now await what it does is that it actually runs a promise based function and instead of having to call then or catch on it it actually waits for it to end so we can write const uh, file equal to await and download this file okay there we go then next step that we need to do is uh, const archive uh, is equal to await compress and we pass the file name and the format and finally we do await and upload this to whatever site this was ftpfiles.com and this archive so there we have an async function inside that we call things with await and uh, let's run this and see what happens Oh, sorry, I did not call the task function. I have to call this task function like this. And there we go. So it downloads and it waits till the download is ended to compress and then it waits till the compress is ended to upload. Okay. So this is the async await syntax, the, you know, uh, one of the best ways to write asynchronous code. Uh, group a lot of asynchronous calls into a single function turn it into async. So this entire function will run in the background though, which means that if I write uh, you know, uh, console uh, dot log uh, task started, and I write console dot log. Uh, you know, task ended, and if I try to print this, you will see that task started and ended get actually printed right away, and you know the rest of the task starts uh, happening afterwards, which means that this uh, not actually ended here. So, what happens when I turn a function async is that this function now becomes a promise based function I can do task dot then and here I can write console dot log task actually ended okay now you can see when I run this so this task ended comes up here which is the fake task ended this is not where the task had actually ended but when my entire task is really ended then I get the task actually ended so uh, async await is a way to take a lot of promises and group them together and create a bigger promise inside which each of the uh, promises are uh, running in sequence after one another because we are awaiting for it to end now again this is your ideal case what about when i make some errors now if i turn this into ftp what's gonna happen is that if i run it we're gonna get a error that uh, gets triggered here. We, 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 if we want to decide what is to be happened when this error takes place, um, so then we can use the good old try catch mechanism. We create a try block, we catch for the error, and we take this entire code, 
put it inside the try block and now i can catch any error uh, i can do like you know um, console dot uh, warn uh, there was some error like this if i write and then if i run this so you know if some error has happened then uh, okay so i need to write go for the error case let me try this yeah so there was some error task actually ended now if the error was not at that stage if the error was at the uh, compression stage then in that case again the download will start uh, the download would end and then we would get the error condition here so i can just simply treat this like synchronous code put it inside a try catch block and catch for errors uh, outside it like this so this is what the async await syntax is it's pretty useful it makes writing code uh, reading that code it makes a lot of more sense when we write using the async await syntax like this